good. Is that velocity? I thought velocity was negative T E or negative T E to the negative T then T minus two. That's right, but I don't want it in a product form. When I differentiate okay. again, I prefer this form. It's a it's you will okay. get the same thing. But here, careful because you have three functions in a product. We don't want that. It becomes complicated. But here I have 2t, so this is, this is the same with this. So 2t e to negative t, and then this, minus t squared e to negative t. This is easier to differentiate than this. There is a nice formula for a times, or f times g times h. Since you mentioned it, I have to, I have to give it to you. Of course, no, nobody's asking you to memorize this. But if we have f times g times h, three functions prime, we have f prime g h plus f g prime h plus f g h prime. That's going to be, do not memorize, there is no need, nobody's going to ask you to do that. Okay, so you can use this directly for, if you want to use the product for three functions. Okay, here, two outside, the first function prime is 1, so e to negative t, right, plus t, e to negative t, times the inner function prime, which is negative 1. So this is the first product. Close, because there is a 2 outside. Now minus. I'm going to open again, not to worry about the sign just yet. So I have 2t, e to negative t. I know the answer because I just differentiated this. This was the original function, right? So minus t squared e to negative t. If you remember, this is our function. 2t e to negative t minus t squared e to negative t because this, this is exactly the original function. Okay, so I'm going to put a square here to jump over this. Messy, right? But that's okay. So we have 2e to negative t minus 2te to negative t minus 2te to negative t plus t squared e to negative t. Only these are like terms. And then make up a 4. 4te four to negative t. 2e to negative t minus 4te to negative t and plus t squared e to negative t. This is it. This is the acceleration. And now they want us to find a of 1. 2 over e minus 4 over e plus 1 over e. So 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So negative 1 over e and let's calculate. Oh, it's the same thing with positive 1 over e, right? So we got, uh, where my, was my positive 1 over e? 0.37. So this is negative 0.37. Measurement unit. It cannot have the same measurement unit with the, with the velocity. Feet per second squared. Thank you very much. That's the measurement unit for acceleration. Feet per second squared in this case. Okay, so I'm just checking just to make sure that everything is okay. So I have 2, yes, e to negative t, and then plus um, t, e to negative t times negative 1. That's correct. This was what we had. Uh, that was negative, yes, and this was negative 2t, and this is po negative 2t, and this is positive. I don't see anything. If you see anything, always stop me and let me know. Okay, so we determine, let me go back and share. So we determine uh, the acceleration at time t and after one second. Uh, graph the position, velocity, and acceleration functions with the graphing calculator. We'll do that. That's not a big deal. Now, on 0 to 6. We'll do that in a minute. But I like to jump and, and finish it up and then come back to the graph. Uh, when is the particle speeding up? When it, is it slowing down? Okay. So, page 4. 
So age will be the graph. And we'll look at it in a minute. And I is speeding up, slowing down. T. V of T. A of T. And we're talking about 0 to 6. Let me just go back for a second. Yeah, so it's all about 0 to 6. They should have mentioned it here again. Oh, good. So I go back and I copy my, my velocity. And I know that at um, 2 was 0. And the signs. And now I have to do, study the acceleration. I'm going to copy it here. A of t. And notice that all of them, all of the terms, have e to negative t. So now I have t squared minus 4t plus 2. t squared minus 4t plus 2. OK. So when I set this equal to 0, this could never be 0, right? This is 1 over e to the t. This is never 0. But this could be 0. So I want to show you. I'm going to share my screen. And I want to go here. And um, TI-83 may not have this feature in the apps. Go to number 9, polynomial, polynomials, um, poly, I, I don't know what this means. Simultaneous. Simul yeah, something like that. Um, doesn't matter. So uh, choose 9. OK, and press Enter. And this is order 2, which is normally the degree. should be degree, but they use the word order instead. And yes, uh, it will allow me to enter the uh, coefficients. 1, enter. The next one is negative 4. Negative 4, enter. And the last one is 2, and enter. And I want to solve. And I get t1, 0.59 seconds and t2, 3.41 seconds. If you do not have that feature, I can show you a different way. <clears throat> so, 0 0.59, 3.41, and now I have to study the sign. This is always positive. And there is nothing I can study here. Disregard that for the sign. It's always positive. And I know that this quadratic function has a positive leading coefficient. So it has a minimum. In between solutions is negative. You can check with any number you want. And outside of the solutions is positive. Because it has a minimum. And it has two x-intercepts. So it has to be ne negative. So you can plug in 2 if you want. 4 plus 2 is 6 minus 8 negative and outside positive. And now we will make, we'll draw conclusions. Notice that we see several subintervals. This subinterval, this subinterval, second one, this, and this. Four subintervals. So let's make a conclusion about the first subinterval. The velocity is going this way. The acceleration is also going this way. The acceleration is, or they are helping one another because they are both, both going in the same direction. Do you think that between this and this, the function is, I'm sorry, the particle is speeding up or slowing down? It's speeding up. That's it. So here's our conclusion right here. Conclusion. Speeding up. Next one. Here the velocity is going this way, but there is a force against it. 
which is the acceleration. The acceleration is this way. So the velocity is positive, but the acceleration is negative. Do you think that this in this interval between 0.59 seconds and 2 seconds, is it speeding up or slowing down? Would it be slowing down? Slowing down. Now you understand what's happening here. Between 2 and 3.41, what's happening here? Speeding up or slowing down? Slowing down. Okay, let's discuss this. The velocity is in this way. The acceleration is in this way, in this direction. They're helping one another. They're not against each other. It's like I ride my bike and I have a tailwind or backwind. Does that oh, speeding up just in a negative direction? Yes, speeding up. Finally, ex uh, velocity this way, acceleration this way. What do we, can you say between 3.41 and 6? Down. Yes, slowing down. When the forces are against each other, when the forces are against each other, the particle is slowing down. When forces are going together, the particle is speeding up. So finally they want us to graph, so let's do just that. A lot of typing in. Okay, so we do have um, we do have uh, the original function, so that's in blue. Now in red I want to enter the velocity, so 2x e2 negative x and then minus minus what minus x squared e to negative x okay and now I need the acceleration which is even worse but it is what it is so the accelerate the the distance is in blue, um, the um, um, velocity in red, and we have in black. We're going to have um, the acceleration ready. So two e to negative t, of course x, then minus four t e to negative. I should have put the factor form so I don't have to enter this so many times, but that's okay. And then plus t squared, and again, e raised to negative x. Okay, perfect. So now we have to see those, those four sub-intervals. Do not click enter yet. Let's go to the viewing window between 0 and 6. That's all we want to see for time. I don't know what to say about y minimum and x minimum. I'm just going to keep negative 10 and 10 for now, and we'll see what happens. If, if I don't see the entire graphs, then I'll have to adjust this. But for x, definitely. That's the time between 0 and 6. So careful, because they will all go very fast, right? Distance, velocity, acceleration. Good. So I know what I have to do. So this is um, 2, 4, 6. Yeah, so let's say I have to go back and adjust. I'm going to adjust between negative 6 and 6 because the graph doesn't much better, much better, much better. Not enough. I just want to do it again. So I'm going to say negative 3 to 3. Okay, better, better, better. Disregard the blue graph for a moment. I can go back and de-highlight it. Good. So I just want to look at uh, the velocity and acceleration. So see between uh, 0 and 5.9, 0 and 0.59, you see 
the acceleration is is positive, the velocity is positive. Both curves are above the x-axis. Between 0.59 and 2, um, the uh, velocity is positive, but the acceleration is negative. Between 2 and 3 point, so 1, 1, 2, 3.41, right here. Both are negative. See, the velocity is under the x-axis, the acceleration is under the x-axis. Right here, everything changes again because the acceleration is positive, but the velocity is negative between 3.41 and 6. Exactly what we got. Good. Any questions? Any questions? So in the same way, we have to uh, analyze for any other function. This was a very good pick. Thank you. I don't remember who picked it, but thank you. I would like to look at one graph and move on. Let's see. Uh, graphs of the position function of two particles are shown where t is measured in seconds. Uh, when is the velocity of each particle positive? When, it is, when is it negative? When is each particle speeding up? When is it slowing down? Okay. So let's, um, let's look at uh, one of these or uh, suppose that the graph of the velocity function, we have the velocity. Uh, when is the particle traveling f forward? When it is traveling backward? What is happening between 5 and 7? So you choose. One, two, three. 